Okay, so welcome to this second video on the cell cycle where we're specifically uh, looking at the G1S checkpoint. Okay, uh, so um, we're going to discuss uh, the G1 and the S phase uh, in particular. And uh, we've discussed already at length in this uh, playlist on cancer, uh, we've discussed ways in which you can activate, you can trigger a cell to go from interphase into the G1 phase. So we've seen the Wnt uh, beta-catenin pathway where uh, the beta-catenin uh, transcriptional co-activator bound to T-cell factors and lymphoid enhancer factors, which were transcription factors in the nucleus, and therefore could activate uh, the, the change in the transcription of proteins so that you would move from interphase into G1 phase. We've also seen how uh, the growth factor receptor through either uh, the MAP kinase slash ERK pathway or uh, the PI3 kinase um, AKT mTOR pathway can also lead to the uh, movement from interphase into this G1 phase. Okay, now what we want to discuss is a bit more about what's actually happening to the DNA in G1 phase. What do I mean by getting ready uh, to divide, uh, basically, well, to, do, to replicate the DNA. So, basically, in G1 phase, so we're talking about in G1 phase, what you are getting, you are indeed getting ready to replicate the DNA. And what I mean by uh, getting ready to replicate the GN DNA is that um, you are setting up what are known as pre-replication complexes, or pre-RCs. So pre-RCs, which stand for pre-replication complex. So this is a pre-replication complex. And you basically are producing these pre-replication complexes in uh, the uh, G1 phase of the cell cycle. Okay, right, so what is a pre-replication complex? Well, basically, if I draw out a great big piece of DNA like so, and I will represent DNA by two lines. So the two lines represent the two complementary strands of DNA, basically. Okay, now let's say this is a huge, great linear piece of DNA, and let's say it represents an entire chromosome, okay? What there will be, the way DNA is replicated, is that along this chromosome, you will have many different origins of replication. Okay, so you'll have many different sites along this chromosome where DNA replication can be started, basically. And these sites are known as origins of replication. Origins of replication. Okay, right. And uh, basically, these are where the DNA polymerase enzyme comes along and is going to start copying the DNA. So what's going to basically happen is when you actually copy the DNA, you'll start copying it from here, and maybe you'll go in this direction. So maybe we should have an origin of replication right at the start there. Okay, so in order to copy the DNA, what will happen is, so I'm going to go over it very basically, and then we'll, just so that we know what an origin of replication is, and then we'll look at the details of this, because the DNA polymerase does not just bind at the moment. So this is not in G1 phase, I'm just talking now about origins of replication. Right, so basically what will happen is, if you want to replicate a chromosome, what happens is that uh, the DNA polymerase enzymes are going to bind to these origins of replication once they've got loads of proteins assembled, which we're going to talk about. So let's say this is our DNA polymerase enzyme. So you'll get loads of DNA polymerase enzymes start binding to each of these origins of replication. And basically, they will work their way in this direction, let's say, and they will all move in the same direction and they will copy the bit of DNA between their origin of replication and the next origin of replication. So, each one, basically, will, um, will do this. So, let's look at what this D um, DNA polymerase enzyme will do. Basically, it will copy these two strands here. So, it will make the uh, two copies now. So, it's copied this portion. So, it's made a complementary strand to... Let me colour things into make it more obvious. So, let's say this strand here will colour in in pink. That's that strand there, okay? And uh, so let's say we colour this strand here 
in orange, that's that strand there. So these two new strands that we've made have been made by that DNA polymerase moving down that way and synthesizing uh, complementary strands to each of these other two strands which have been moved apart. Okay, so it does this little section here. Then this next DNA polymerase along will do the copying for this next section between these, the second origin of replication and the third. Okay, so let's show that. So let's color this one in green here, okay, and that green one will be, if I extend this further on like so, okay, so these are these uh, complementary strands which have been synthesized, okay, and here is this green piece here, so it goes up to that same length, okay, and basically this next DNA polymerase will synthesize this portion here and this portion here. So it will synthesize those two as it progresses along here, basically. Okay, and let me color this um, strand in here pink, and that's that one there. Okay, so I hope I've got that point across that you have these different spread along the chromosome, uh, which is a linear piece of DNA in eukaryotes. Um, you have these different origins of replication, as they are called, and these are basically where you begin the process of DNA replication. So you go basically from one origin of replication to the next, i.e. there is not a single DNA polymerase binding at the start here and copying the entire strand that would take far too long. Instead, um, you have loads of these different sites and all of them basically are doing it at once. That means that this one can be working whilst, this one's working whilst, this one's working, and that means that you can copy the entire chromosome much more quickly than if you just had one starting at one end and then going all the way through and copying the whole thing at, in one go. So you have these multiple origins of replication spread out along your chromosome, which are where you're going to begin the, um, uh, the replication process from, basically. Okay, so let's turn over and continue our discussion. Right, so let's say we have our piece of DNA here, and uh, now I've explained to you what an origin of replication is, I'm going to say this is an origin of replication. So these are basically portions of DNA where the machinery for beginning uh, replication can bind to. So it's not a coding portion of the DNA. This is not involved in making proteins. This is a portion of DNA that is merely there in order for the uh, machinery of DNA replication to bind to it when you need to uh, copy the DNA, basically. So it has a very important role, but it's not in uh, coding for proteins. Okay, right. So. In G1 phase, then, back to where we were, in G1 phase, what is happening is you are assembling the first bits of the protein machinery that is going to be needed in order to actually begin the process of DNA replication from this origin of replication. And that process of beginning DNA replication from an origin of replication is often known as firing of that origin of replication, i.e. when a DNA polymerase starts moving from the origin of replication and copying the DNA, that's, we say that the origin of replication has fired. Okay. Right, so before you can actually get an origin of replication to fire, you need to assemble a huge amount of protein machinery on this origin of replication. And you assemble part of it, basically, in, um, in um, the G1 phase, basically. You assemble the final bit in um, the uh, S phase, once you've gone into S phase, and then you actually can fire it. Uh, but you assemble the beginning bits in G1 phase, and that's what I mean when I say we're getting ready to replicate the DNA. Okay, right. So the first thing which comes on, the first thing which binds to this origin of replication, and I'll show this actually happening. So we'll show it as a flow diagram. So here's our origin of replication drawn out by me again. And basically, the first thing to come and bind on is a big, big protein known as the origin recognition complex. So this here is the origin recognition complex. And that has a nice little um, acronym uh, by some Lord of the Rings fan. It's an orc. 
So this is ORC, basically. And the origin recognition complex, or the ORC, is not just one protein. It's a complex. It's a big, big mass of many different proteins, all working together to bind to this origin of replication. Okay, so what colour should I draw it in? I'll have it a green. Okay, so this origin of replication, uh, origin recognition complex, pardon me, um, binds to this origin of replication, and it's the first such protein to do it. So it's the complex, it's a complex of a huge number of different proteins, which all come together and bind to some recognition site that they recognize on this origin of replication. And this is happening in every single uh, origin of replication along the chromosome. So remember, in our entire chromosome, if I draw it here, we have loads of these origins basically spread along the chromosome. And basically, this is going to happen at every single one. You're going to get an origin uh, recognition complex binding to every single one. So I'll draw that as these green dots. Okay, so here's a green dot, here's a green dot. So these are all origin of recognition complexes binding to the origin uh, of replications. Okay, right, so... That's the first step in forming this pre-replication complex. The next step is that two more proteins need to come and associate. And these two proteins are uh, by the name of CDC6 and CDT1. So you'll hear about these proteins quite a lot. They're quite important. CDT1. OK, right. So, uh, what's going to happen is not just one of these proteins associates, but in fact two of them associate. So, um, you have two CDC6s coming in, and you have two CDT1s coming in. Okay, right. So, we should cover them in so that we can get this message across in the easiest way possible. Okay, so this is the origin of replication, which I'm gradually making bigger so that I can fit everything in. And um, we're going to color code CDC6 in this nice orange color. So CDC6 from now on will be colored orange. And uh, CDT4 we will color in pink. Okay, right. So I'm going to show you how these um, associate with the... Um, with the um, origin of replication. So here, so far, we've already got the origin recognition complex, or the ORC, bound to our origin of replication. And this is not just to one origin of replication, remember, this is happening to all of them. Oh, and not just on one chromosome either, it's happening on every single chromosome. So every single origin of, uh, origin of replication on every single chromosome. So now what happens? is the CD, this is going to be a CDC6, and this is going to be a CDC6. So they bind like so, okay? So you get two CDC6s binding, and I haven't actually drawn a connection, but it, it just makes the picture look pretty. But the point is that they're sort of, you know, they're binding on, There's, they're, we're forming a bigger complex here, okay? And then next, these CDT1s bind on, and we're forming a nice big complex as well. Okay, so you get two CDC6s binding and two CDT1s. Now, unfortunately, that's not it yet. There's another th another protein that needs to come along in order to actually make this a pre-replication complex. So let's talk about that final protein. Okay, the final protein then is um, what's known as an MCM protein, which is and the name given to DNA helicase. And again, you don't just get one DNA helicase coming in, you get two DNA helicases coming in. So you get two of these MCM uh, helicase enzymes coming in. Okay, so you get these two MCM helicases, and let's color code these as well. We'll have them blue. So these are MCM helicases in blue. Right, okay. Now, what's going to happen is they're going to bind on either side, basically, to this. So if I finally draw this end picture here, then here's the DNA here. Here's the uh, boundaries of the origin of, rec of um, replication. Here's the origin recognition complex, or the ORC. Here are our uh, CDT1 proteins here. Then our CDC6 proteins. And now, sitting alongside here, is our MCM protein, 
which is our helicase enzyme, which is going to basically open the DNA up for us. Okay, so let me colour in everything. So in blue, these are our new additions. These are our MCM proteins. Okay, right. Uh, in uh, pink, this is our uh, CDT1 protein here. Okay. Um, in orange, we have our CDC6 protein. So that's up here. Okay. And then finally, right in the center, and we're going to color it in green, is the origin recognition complex, or the ORC protein. Now, this entire complex that we have assembled so far on every single origin of, rec of replication, on every single chromosome that you have in your cell, this is what we call a pre-replication complex. So this is the pre-replication complex or it's often just abbreviated to the P pre-RC, basically. Okay, and these are basically going to be converted uh, when we move into the S phase into uh, complexes, well, you know, they're going to be converted into something that's actually going to move along uh, the DNA. So this is what's going to be used uh, for DNA polymerase to actually mount on. We're going to modify it slightly before DNA polymerase can actually mount on. Uh, but in essence, we've started the preparations, basically. Okay, so in the G1 phase of the cell cycle, on every uh, origin of replication, on every chromosome, this is happening, basically. You are forming these pre-replication complexes ready uh, to make, um, to make a, well, ready to dock um, DNA polymerase, basically, when we move into the S phase of the cell cycle.